Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be taking a look at GNOME 42 right after this. So the first thing about GNOME 42 is that it's the result of six months worth of work. This release provides significant new features, enhancements, and minor improvements. It was released on March 23rd, just a day ago from when I'm making this video, uh, 2022, of course. So the first thing that you have in this one is a new and improved dark style. So you'll notice that when you go into appearance, you'll get uh, this style up here that has light and dark in it. The light and dark is globally implemented. So Whatever I do here will affect applications all throughout the system, including the background. So you'll notice down here these background wallpapers have a split. So the, the, le the left hand split is for the light, the right hand is for the dark. So it'll show you uh, based on you know which one you choose, which one you get. So it, it'll darken up. That's, I, I think that's kind of nice, you know, that from the standpoint of being able to do that. The, the other thing is that if you want to leave it light, but you prefer a dark app, let me, let me show you how that works. So you can control this by the app. So you'll notice that this one is dark, even though my background, I believe, I think is also dark. Let me just check. No, it's light. So... I can change it here to what I want the application to be independently of the system. So on some applications, I may prefer to have a light background. On some of them, I don't. So uh, in this case, I'll probably just leave that dark. But yeah, you can control that. Now that's not implemented on every single one. There's also a new screenshot experience as well. Let's say that I am interested in this and I want to record my session or I want to take a screenshot. So I hit the print screen button, the PRTSCR button, and you'll notice right away it comes up with a selection box that I can, you know, I can resize it any way I want to. Or I can have it take a screenshot of the full screen or just the window, which would take all of it. So I can then just go ahead and choose the screenshot, snap it. It will put that in my pictures folder. And there it is right there, along with two others I did earlier. Or uh, if I wanted to, I can hit the print screen button. And this time I want to video that window and we'll go ahead and hit record. Now I'm not gonna play that because I'm sure that would be a problem. But I maybe I want to smooth scroll this uh, and then have it yeah, show what's going on. So this is showing me different applications that I can use. So once you're done with it up here, you can click on this and that will end the screencast. This entry gets placed in uh, your uh, screencast folder. Uh, the other thing is that we have uh, GDK4 and Lib Avada. The, I brought down the Advatia demo, and this will kind of give you some idea of some of the new controls that are available. Uh, like there's this leaf mode where, you know, I can, let's see, let's do maybe a side, a slide, and then, yeah, and then it kind of, I guess it kind of slides. There's a clamp. There's lists, so you have all of these actions. So there's that control. There's also a view switcher where you have, you know, this kind of an interface to move between different elements on the screen. Uh, there's also a carousel. Oh, okay, you can drag it. And then there's an app, you can change your avatar, kind of stuck with whatever it wanted to show you. So I can show, I can turn the initials on and off. I can load a <clears throat> image to be used. Then there's flap. And that is going to allow me to, okay, let's do it auto. And so we have folding. 
start and end. You can reposition where I want the menus. There are a lot of features in here that uh, will do that. So then you have the tab view here. So those have all been newly uh, upgraded versions of the apps that can be installed also by a flat pack. And you can, let me get my cursor back on here again. So you can, like for example, I have set mine up to go to flat pack. So all of these will be looking at the flat pack repository. They do, they are pushing really hard to move people to flat pack and away from standard apps because of the issues that we have. I don't know if you've seen them, but I certainly have. So the most the, the most significant app to be upgraded, of course, is settings, uh, <laughs> which I, I guess, yeah, okay, that's probably true. So yeah, you've noticed that we had this kind of styling going on here. Uh, the You'll notice that, yeah, these have all been improved. Uh, the search feature, multitasking. There's now, you know, some things here that are showing you images. It's just, it's much nicer the way this is working. I think the idea behind this is to try to get away from people installing uh, GNOME extensions. Uh, the other thing is they have modified, and, and this is a whole new version of text. So um, it's it has... You know, I, you know, you can turn line numbers on and off. They, I mean, it's it's okay, I guess. I mean, yep, there's shell. So, yeah, I mean, you can color code it the way you want. You can turn on the line numbers if you need that. I, I don't know. Do you guys really use line numbers anymore? So they have made a lot of improvements with this. Uh, you can customize it. Again, you have the same controls here if you want it light or dark. And I wonder, no not doing anything so yeah uh, also it auto saves for you so yeah you don't have to worry about losing your work and so forth obviously this has been improved too uh, there's some nice UA touches like you know the scroll bars here are and let me get let me get something that is actually scrolling uh, let's not get crazy let's not do the entire system so uh, you'll notice that the scroll bars are sort of partially hidden. This is very Mac-ish, <laughs> very Mac-ish. Although I, I have to say that this is a better implementation than Mac uses uh, for this. So yeah, much, much better. Uh, there's also a header bar, and you'll notice that this is not as dark on this one as, as it is has been in the past on GNOME. I mean, it was almost, you know, if you did dark mode, it was black all the way through. This is kind of a lighter standoff. The other thing is on this one, if I do, if I'm running as root, the header bar will change color to warn me that, hey, you're in root, so take care what you're doing. Yep. And then it goes off automatically. So that's a nice touch. There's also a number of imp uh, performance improvements. GNOME 42 includes, now obviously I can't show you this because I don't have anything running and I don't have a video to show you. Most of the improvements have been to like uh, making sure that the standard apps are using more modern versions of things like OpenGL and that they are accelerating uh, the execution using hardware. So if you have a graphics card, it'll try to offload more of that work, for example. So some examples of things that they've improved is video. Uh, they've been improved the decoding portion of it. And now, I don't know about encoding. They just talk about decoding. So if you're actually creating videos and you're rendering out, I don't know how much smoother that would be for you. But it's really trying to make the experience for playback and so forth better. The file indexing and tracker, it's been, you know, dramatically improved apparently uh, to reduce startup times and uh, the amount of memory. The other thing is that the input handler has been significantly enhanced. So that results in lower input latency. So you shouldn't see as much lagginess when you're typing stuff in or you're answering a modal dialog box. Also, it uh, will also uh, lower the power consumption on devices, uh, particularly if you're doing video playback. And it should also, because of that lower latency, it should increase the frame rate for games. 
So if you're a gamer, uh, Gnome will provide you some additional support uh, to try to improve things. The other thing, let me make sure I have my cursor here. Yeah, let me, <laughs> I'm training myself to use boxes. The other thing is that you have, there's a new function now uh, under connect. Before this only allowed VNC connections, they now default to RDP. Uh, they still provide support for VNC, but there are they are saying that this is their preferred way. Uh, okay, if, if you insist. <laughs> I mean, RDP is not all that secure, but some other improvements are the styling of GNOME Systems UI. It's been updated, as you can see, or many of these changes are subtle, um, but there's a more polished and an elegant appearance. And I think you can see that, you know, some of the things that they have changed are like these drop downs up here used to be a little bit further down on the screen. And now they're really tight, almost up against the bar. Um, so, and they, they have also improved, you know, the visibility of some of this stuff. So they have changed the, uh, icons finally got away from those, those, uh, beige boxes, uh, the beige uh, icons that they used to use for known that looked horrible. So yeah, they finally have gotten a, a, a more decent, uh, set of icons, which look nice. Those look nice. Uh, also now I don't have boxes installed because I am running on boxes. But I can tell you, I am running the Flatpak version of Boxes, which is the latest release that is on track with GNOME 42. So I had to go and actually, uh, well, they recommended that I use the latest version of Boxes for this. And the reason for it is Boxes uh, has better support for modern uh, uh, UFE uh, systems. So. Yeah, and the other in the in the past, sometimes when you had UFE. Uh, based uh, ISOs, <laughs> it just wouldn't launch under boxes, but they do now, they work fine. Uh, in videos, the media playback can now be controlled by the integrated uh, media control in the notification list. So when you get a notification, say from YouTube or from wherever, uh, that there's a new video, you can now play it directly from that notification. So what are some of the, what are, I guess, what are some of the wrap up on, on, on what I've kind of given you some of my opinion as I went along here, but GNOME 42, when can you use it? In April, Fedora 36, I assume that also means that Silver Blue will also have it because they kind of track in the same uh, versions that they have for one will be in the other. So GNOME 42, there'll be a full implementation of that on Fedora Workstation 36. And I would assume Fedora of Silver Blue 36 as well. Also, uh, Ubuntu is uh, 2204 will include the bulk of uh, the GNOME 42 release and the extensions from GTK4 and Lib uh, Edwatia. So, the the problem is is that with uh, uh, Ubuntu is they have, as you know, made a lot of changes to the to the applications to support the changes to the UI that they want. That means that their development time, so if I'm releasing uh, GNOME 42 now, now I'm sure they've been working with the beta, but in order to have a really stable release to do testing, they only have from now until, what, third week, fourth week of April, somewhere around in there when they actually release uh, Ubuntu uh, 2204 to actually complete testing. And they just don't feel that they have enough time to make sure that they get all the apps in. So they're, they're gonna have some that will have the look and feel of GNOME 42 integrated and some that won't. Uh, but I can tell you that that's gonna be true no matter where you go because it'll just be the only ones you're guaranteed to have the new 42 is the applications that GNOME releases. So I don't know if that means that uh, Ubuntu is holding back some of the GNOME applications. We'll have to wait and see what that actually means. So that's all I had. Um, uh, yeah, it is uh, it is out. It is uh, available, and it will be coming. That's all I had for today. Please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. Bye for now. <music>